Happiness is fluid can be molded with every heartfelt thought, every glance, every flowing hair in a lady. And a man's. Tan. Characterlessness. At will, as one expects, what one wants and even what one does not expect. To be pleasantly surprised. Such is the heaven that God created for us. But we still have to wait a little longer and we will experience it realistically. At the moment there is no fullness in the cosmos. It is necessary to reach for the cosmos of God, true and attractive life in heaven. The momentous things for man are to remember his own wonderful, God-created soul. These are the most important things. To adapt oneself to accept eternal life, already without reincarnation, in happiness and mutual love. May this life for everyone already be the last on this earth, Padre Pio's words. But perhaps someone will ask, why do we need to evolve, to suffer if the soul is godlike? It is worth remembering this, which happened in very ancient times. Then the matter will become clear why we still need development and science. Development and science, testifies to the collapse into which we were forced by violence. In fact, development and science never existed and never will. There is only the artistry and artistry of love. Nothing more. But this is only the future. God is love. Existence and delight, are love, Forms of pleasure of eternal existence, enjoyment, are love. Eternal damnation is the view of certain secular and religious elites who would most gladly put everyone in hell. When someone does wrong, after all, almost everyone condemns them. But we will wise up and return to what is our true eternal essence. Reincarnation leads us to that very goal. The Church will take back the knowledge of reincarnation. Padre Pio's words. Not for much longer. He used to have it, but disavowed it for the idea of hell. Just as politicians, medics, churches, are at odds with each other, so is science similarly. Science is at odds with itself. Already there is talk of a whole new physics. The full truth will never be revealed here. Someone is watching over it to make sure it happens. Star Wars, this is real symbolism. Someone wisely said, that only love fulfills the law. Because only love extinguishes science, aggression, that is, ignorance, and all limitations. But this is yet to come, beyond earth already, in the hereafter. In material life there is only development, experience and constant learning, expansion, of still unknown to us, the soul. Material consciousness helps in this. However, consciousness is only a prelude to reaching the fullness of perfection of superconsciousness, the soul. In heaven, too, there is cognition, Padre Pio's words. There one gets to know the imagination of love of other beings. God does not use conceptual logic in the human sense. If he did he would hurt us all. He uses the objects of love. But this is a very difficult issue for humans. Life on earth is a form of purgatory, purification from lack of love. It is the collection of valuable for personal development, experiences. But it is only a way to the true goal, eternal bliss of each individual. Someday experiences, tears, annoyances will cease to matter and will fall away once and for all. Of course, real and achievable only outside this cosmos. We are trapped in the reactions of material consciousness. This is a deliberate game created by cosmic scientists who rule like us, their own possessions. They don't care about our happiness, but about us being born again and again into this calcause and thus sustaining their idea of biological life. They are concerned with humiliating us and destroying our sense of eternal soul. Just as the communists did with the expelled soldiers, to make them, and future generations, forget who they were, and what they fought for. 
It's no different in the cosmos, with the scientists creators. Therefore, we do not yet live in heaven, but in planetary exile. It is necessary to shake off this every day. And proceed to the mountain of the heart. It's a good thing my brain is missing, all that's left is a grey trunk. I'm not complaining that there's only water in my head. This only proves where I live, and what is my dark side. I rebel against the brain, the less of it I have, the better for the soul. Yes, quite a perverse statement according to modern psychology and philosophy. The strategy of matter is geared towards evolutionary killing of the soul. No one cares about the soul, but only about the complex university of material life. Law and science is a finite utopia, which all past and present civilizations have fallen for, by the mistake of angels. Let's note, civilizations have produced more weapons, bombs, bullets for rifles, pills, vaccines that destroy our bodies, than there are people in the world. Civilizations, and in them at various degrees of sophistication science, is a tool for enslaving all materialistic beings. It is a tool for the corruption of the pure soul. Because it does not allow the thought that it is possible to exist differently, to live without knowledge, to live in fall. Fact, for the brain alien to this science. But even Jesus already talked about it. But who listens to him? The Catholic Church, my church, listens to him the least. Primal soul, woven from love, love again loving love. And for this reason, ask yourself, why doesn't love want to be loved? Who is blocking it? Some kind of flaw. Yes, an ancient blemish. But I, against the fallen heavens in which I currently reside, I will love, even if someone slaps me. To love, this has been our dream for millennia. And may this love move to eternity. And there, I will no longer try to love, but I will abide in love, in contact with an infinite number of angels and with their dreamed, delightful lands. For there, one experiences similarly, as angelic souls experience in the fallen palace, earth. God created heaven and angels, us, simply because he is a romantic and mystical seducer. Therefore, he had to create something so that he would have someone to seduce in his kingdom of love. When someone falls in love with you, most often he says, I see the whole world in you. And God is just like us. In each of us individually, he sees the whole world, his whole heaven. Strange? Not at all, why be surprised here, since we feel the same way. Women towards men, and men towards women. I would add, everything with God can be asked out, even a little heaven high on low earth. With God everything is possible. It is only necessary to ask, and at the same time not to forget that at our own request we abandon the lands of happiness that were guaranteed by God. Now we can only ask that he give us the opportunity to return to this wonderful place. Mistakes and experiments cost money. No one can get there unless they are calm in doing good. True love is a notion, on which one can swim, explore new lands, its liquidity drink, splash and chill from the excesses of the mystical gusts of the heart. Science by science, but we still somehow mysteriously become aware of our own soul, which material science doesn't even have a clue about. No idea at all. We have complete veils of the soul in the form of the senses of the body, but still. We can discover something. Not through science, because it is based only on the senses and logical thinking, and this is not enough, much too little. Science and materialistic technologies always lead to the retreat of civilization, to its collapse and oblivion of how things were already in the past. And yet, here were already higher civilizations than ours at present. Padre Pio's words. The soul is a challenge to minds liberated beyond material goods. Let's think. 
What would it look like if this wonderful, wonderful, loving God were to cast his beloved children into the abyss of hell, and for all eternity? Wouldn't we look at such a parent with distaste? Probably yes. No one would love such a God. He would turn away from him. Unfortunately, the teachings of the churches treat God in just such a way, as bad, unmerciful, throwing all sinners into hell. The question is, and who is not a sinner, since we all consciously left heaven once? After all, we feel that God is the most tender mother. Something seems to be at play here in the gospel teachings, and the teachings of church representatives. Yes. We know from human experience that any mother, no matter what she may be, even the son of a criminal, will defend and justify in court. She would never want her child to be in solitary confinement, prison, hell. God, the creator of children, would be less tender than a human mother. Never. He is the same as any mother. Hell is a kind of drug promoted by religious writers to wrongly control people's morality. Hell, it is a stimulant of fear for the practical use of the material economy of the churches and once even the state. It is necessary to move away from it. It is high time? The heart does not have to abandon anything, because everything belongs to it. This is the original assumption of heaven. But on earth, the ego distorts this picture permanently, because it fears that someone will take something away from it. Everything belongs to you, but you are told through massed natural laws that not everything will be yours. Fight and conquer. This is how we were tricked into progress. In the original there is no progress, because everything is fullness. Our leaving heaven ended for us with destruction of personality, blemishes on soul and body. Progress in matter. And there won't be much in this cosmic mess of yours anymore. You want to have everything back, reach for the original. To make it better and closer to heaven on this earth, we must together radiate noble goodness gently on the membranes of change. I hope that they will drown out the rumble and shriek of disbelief, infantile politicians and artists. I hope they will clear this lake of everyday life, infected with the cyanobacteria of hubris and little serious false consciousness. Without religion, however, there is emptiness and quantum mechanics. Without religion, we are dumbed down to the senses and pushing with our elbows for prestige and money. Is this enough to defeat death and live forever? I doubt it. It may only seem that way to someone. But nevertheless, a grey hair will get him. And then what? Again atheism and hello soul. Well, how much can the same, billions of years is not enough. Reincarnating indefinitely in the cosmos, fallen heaven with the permission of God's mercy. Let's not exaggerate gentlemen, and ladies. It's time to understand your existence. Nothing is relative, or absolute. At the same time, there are no cases. Hard knowledge, double-edged. But this happens only in a fallen cosmos. In the worlds of ideals, i.e. in the cosmos of perfect heaven, these problems no longer exist. There is absolute freedom, which nobody notices, and love, which nobody pays attention to, because joy and happiness is the generally accepted norm of all. The fallen cosmos, the one we live in now, is surrounded by a body of perpetual suffering. Therefore, it is necessary to look into the fortress of own soul as often as possible. There is reassurance, and the hope of regaining heaven. Here we look for love all the time. There we have it. Man is so enlightened that nothing, and it is absolutely nothing, does not know what is going on in his body on an ongoing basis. How neurons are now circulating in the head, or red blood corpuscles in the veins, and billions of other things too numerous to list, and related to nature itself. Doesn't this make us ridiculous in the eyes of the soul? The question who am I, and who is my soul, and what is an imperfect, 
skin covered aging, body. We are so enlightened that we are walking in the dark and in the dark. Isn't this a kind of anti-science habilitation? A giggle of helplessness. What has happened that we are so humiliated in every way? Whoever falls on the trail of the answer to this question, what a bit lighter to live in this calcause of forced labor, forced breathing, heartbeat, forced possession of a flightless, and ignorant body. This world, of all places, is wallpapered with ignorance and all sorts of unheard of limitations. This is not hopelessness, but hope for enlightenment, for a wise thought to come to you sometimes a sentence spoken from the heart and not from the mind, it sometimes takes a minute of thought, five minutes, a week, a month, a year, or even a couple of years. It depends on how quickly you evaluate the reality you see and don't see. It all depends on your intelligence, the science of the heart, no longer addition and subtraction, but multiplication and integration. The wisdom of existence. Everyone should develop in themselves an inner compulsion to seek the core of life. To begin with, notice the material world, materialism, atheism, the senses of the body and map cosmic, personal, systemic, political, opinion, and religious conflicts. That is to say, start with the natural path to the goal. However, the main goal is fully invisible. This is where the difficulty lies. In the beginning, one needs simple education, learning. In the next stage, only faith is needed. Because learning, resulting from the limitations and possibilities of the material mind, turns into complete ignorance at some point, becoming useless. The longer we walk towards the goal, it will get closer and closer to us. At the end of this journey, rays of knowledge will appear again. But this knowledge will no longer come from this world, but from the original. As long as we remain in the physical body, faith remains our central option for opening our minds to supreme knowledge and extraterrestrial love. Faith is the pinnacle of knowledge. Material science is a compromise of the soul, dragging us into constant intellectual and existence problems. Consequently, dissatisfaction and suffering. The lightness of faith, is the powerful knowledge of the original heaven, set on the all possibilities of eternal goodness. It takes some courage and honor to embark on such a path. As soon as you decide to take such a direction, you will automatically stop offending your soul, which is something completely different from the human body. You will appreciate your true capabilities beyond the mind, beyond the body, at the stage of our current development. And one more thing, this body, is not our original shell, but has cleverly fused with our soul, so that it can completely obscure it. And this is happening because of the trickery of science, and the free will of aliens, angels, living in the fallen heavens of space. The senses, the body, they veil the soul and heaven, Padre Pio's words. There are some people in the world who never think about life. They enjoy collecting various objects, cooking, laundry, constant cleaning, preparing Christmas Eve, name days, holidays, sitting on the plot, they enjoy making a career, learning, etc. Never, but never, do they think about the deeper meaning of what they are doing. And in this way they miss something important. They miss out on even greater satisfaction and delight in life. Life is nevertheless a mystical journey outward and inward of a mysterious being that bursts with the heat of happiness. Happiness does not need consciousness in the human sense. In general, neither consciousness nor thinking is needed so much for happiness. Consciousness and thinking, under the influence of happiness, sort of switches off, enters superconsciousness and superthinking. The problem is that the mind and all the minds of this world tell us something that anchors us in integration with this world of feeling and thinking. We have all the gates to our own souls locked. We don't even know it. 
The joy of feeling I am is stronger than the original truth of being in eternity. But this is the deception promoted by angelic manipulators, which disregards the soul for themselves, and pins suffering on all the living in the form of illusory consciousness, and an egoistic sense of I am. I know how painful this knowledge is, how inadequate to this fallen reality. Living here, we use the whole personality equipped with memory, feeling, consciousness. But in fact it is a hypocrisy, hammering us into the ground of impermanence and limitation. Limited consciousness, once it has been imposed on us, can be used for spiritual growth. It depends on us whether we want to overcome the limitations of material heavens, or continue to remain in them and agonize all, perhaps, the next life. We know very well that our consciousness can't do anything. Yet with this we get excited. It can't even love. So it is necessary to reach for the greatest treasure, where all options and possibilities are available. The true heaven is as real as what we see with our eyes and feel through our bodily senses in this world. Because this world was created in the likeness of that one. But as we can see, it lacks much. Where, then, is heaven? Partly we see it in matter, here and now. But in the reality we are concerned with, it is outside the material world. In the hereafter. Just as there is a beautiful world of tangible forms in this world, so is there a world of tangible forms in that world. In and around the soul, as on earth. Earthly eyes do not see higher, volatile forms and define them through imagination, most often as ideal forms or beautiful, fantastic fairy tales, which we love very much. And rightly so, because it is impossible otherwise, until the whole soul nestles in that world. Then it will see heaven blooming with the attractions of love, concrete and the most sensual, that can be associated. But these senses of the heavenly body are the very honey of love, which is not capable of harming anyone. Conversely, it equally invites everyone to the most wonderful caresses without limitation. Love in love. The perfect worlds of our eternal parents are different from the fading, dying worlds, or heavens in our material galaxies. In the perfect worlds, forms are perfect, volatile with no fixed qualities. And one lives there forever. In a universe made of water, stones, debris, etc., and the blinding light to our eyes by the rays of the material nuclear reactor, i.e., our sun, everything is the other way around. A wise person knows how to explain it to himself, why he chose rubble instead of the palaces of eternity and delight. There are no coincidences. We chose this life quite consciously, perhaps a little manipulated by the enchantment and promises of the rulers of the fallen angels, which decided to create independent heavens. And as you can see, nothing came of it. We unnecessarily let ourselves get screwed into it. Why are we often lost and unhappy? Because we don't understand our own soul consciousness, which lives within us with an extremely pulsating life. When we understand, even though we have enormous mental and chemical limitations, or at least come close to explaining this fabulous phenomenon within us, our heart will calm down and our soul will catch a breath of delight. This delight is precisely eternal life. The closer you get to your good fruits, the more you forget about them. And that's a very good thing. By doing so, you are doing something that is common to all and is the joy of the entire universe in which you currently live. As if it had slipped your mind, I remind you, we are currently on our way to another universe, that's why there are such strange turbulence in honing all virtues. And if you have to gain virtues, goodness, love, it means that you have lost all these nobilities. And you take up work on yourself and you. If you were to set something off in life, whatever that means, first set your soul off from the inside. Light the fuse and momentarily wait for it to explode with positivity, 
smiles and love. You have these possibilities, although they have been deliberately hidden from you, for the duration of this life, you had the same in your previous lives. Rebel against the world and yourself for the unfair game being played against you from birth to death and beyond. Treat love as the most wonderful fragrance, inhale its charm until unconscious, to neutralize the unpositive ego. Then only take on the rest. Whatever that means to you. You have to be crazy to understand life, Padre Pio's words. This madness is to be divine, and by the way you will direct to the happiness of many lost angels in the galaxy.